life on a merry-go-round And you can't find a fighter But I see it in you, so we gon' walk it out Move mountains We gon' walk it out and move And I'll rise up, I'll rise like the day I rise up, I'll rise unafraid I'll rise up, and I'll do it a thousand times again And I'll rise up, I'll rise like the waves I'll rise up, in spite of the ache I'll rise up, and I'll Silence is in quiet And it feels like it's getting hard to breathe And I know you feel like dying But I promise we would take the world to its feet Move I won't dance Bring it to its feet Move I won't dance And I'll rise up, I'll rise like the day I'll rise up, I'll rise unafraid I'll rise up, and I'll do it a thousand times again You, 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 you For that we have each other to tonight's Langston Youth Forum live. Check you guys out, big smiles and ready for tonight. Uh, welcome to the Halloween uh, Halloween night as well. I got goosebumps listening to that music then. I just thought the eating had gone off, but it was definitely eating something there. Um, I'm going to introduce you all in a minute, but uh, I'd like to introduce me, uh, my co-host. It's, uh, is it Gomez? No, 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 sorry, it's Glen Island. It's definitely Glen Island, but uh, I did ask for Gomez, although it is Halloween. Glen. Hey everybody, yeah, I'm Glenn, I'm the team leader for Red Rose Recovery and advocate for Lancashire User Forum, and that's where I started many years ago, so um, get liking and sharing because this platform is for people to be able to, to see what you guys are doing and also to be able to connect, which is quite important, so yeah. Thank you, Glenn, thank you, I think I nearly robbed myself there, yeah, so I'm Scott Parker and I work for Red Rose Recovery, I'm always keen to let other people come in first, honestly. Uh, I work for Liaison Diversion as well, which is part of an arrest referral at Preston Police Station. Uh, and this is employment through Red Rose Recovery that's given the, the brilliant opportunity to connect to other people. And I'm going to do a quick round of introduction, guys. So I'll just pick you out one by one. And uh, if you just want to give us a quick intro and then we'll get on. Daniel Littlechild. Hi, guys. Yeah. My name's Daniel. I work for Red Rose Recovery. I'm an engagement foot worker for the East, also an advocate for the Lancashire User Forum, and I work on the Mind contract. So, thank you very much, Daniel. Lovely to see you, my friend. Uh, Shelley, the lovely Shelley. Morning. Morning. It's not morning. It's evening. <laughs> oh my word. Um, yes, I'm Shelley. I'm here with. Um, the civil service because I work with Red Rose Recovery in a development and leadership role. 
Thank you very much, Shelley. We'll hear a lot more from that later on. Uh, Elizabeth Calderbank. Hi, I'm Elizabeth. I work for We Are With You. Formerly, we were called Young With Action, and um, I'm the Young Persons Worker Club in Preston. Thank you very much, uh, Elizabeth. Definitely hear some more from you later. And Tom, Tom Tierney, do you want to come in and introduce yourself, please, Paul? You're on mute, my friend. Sorry. Hi, uh, I'm Tom. I, I'm in recovery with Red Rose, uh, living in Preston, and just uh, trying to live my dream. Good man, and we'll hear some, uh, some life experience with Tom later on. And... Taz, hello, Taz. A bit jealous. Good evening, all yet. Go on, Taz. Well, you know, take, take many years to get to where it is. Um, yeah, so my name's Taz Ali uh, from Preston Community Hub. Uh, lived all my life in Preston. Uh, and we're just uh, a newly formed organisation trying to save the community. Thank you very much, Taz. Um, Jack, would you like to come in, Pat? Yeah, I, I'm Jack. Um, I'm a civil servant and I've been working with Red Rose um, to help deliver the leadership programme for about a year now. Absolutely brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. I've had experience with yourself, Jack. And Emily, would you like to come in, please? Hello, I'm Emily. Um, I am a part of the Red Rose Recovery I Volunteer and I am in recovery myself. And I'll be doing the uh, comments and shout outs. Um, so happy Halloween, everybody. And Joe Duffield said, yes, guys. And Gary Walsh, happy Halloween. So happy Halloween, Gary. Thank you. Thank you very much, Emily. We'll be bringing you in through the show just to give out questions and shout outs as well. Uh, and the lovely Emma. Emma, would you like to come in, please? Just unmute myself. Hello, uh, I'm Emma. I'm here with The Haven in Central Lancashire, Centre of Preston. Um, I'm a crisis support worker and we uh, work with people who are having mental health challenges, uh, just primarily with CBT techniques, helping people with coping strategies. Well, thank you. Um, so guys, as you can tell, we've got a, a big lineup tonight. We've got a full platform. And I think without further ado, we're going to kick it off. I'm going to hear a lot more about the leadership. And Shelley, Daniel and Jack, I think, uh, are going to come in and have a short discussion and tell us everything that's been going on. And well, Show, show the result of the hard work that you've been putting in as well, Shelley, Daniel, and Jack. <laughs> Thank you, Very guys. close there, Scott. Very close. Um, yes, so I've done quite a lot of work with Glenn over the last 12 months or so, I think now, um, from when we first met back at the Inspire building. And the initial plan was to try and come together with a plan or a program to deliver um, leadership skills to invest in the people that are working with Red Rose Recovery. So for myself, I'm a civil servant of 23 years now, and I don't quite look that old. Um, and the majority of my career has been spent in what we call compliance so it's looking at the claims and looking at tax credits specifically, where they're not correct. And a lot of the questions that we that I had specifically was surrounding the um, the reasons why people might make the decisions that they have. I'm very much an advocate for learning and self development, and it's something that I do have a passion for. Um, but when the opportunity came up to work with Red Rose, it was an opening, it was an opportunity for me to try and understand the other side of the world, really. Um, as I say, I've lived a very sheltered life, worked in the civil service, and I see things very black and white. This is right, that is wrong. Um, and it was after having quite a few conversations with Glenn and the lovely Mr. Yarwood, where I very quickly started to learn that there was actually reasons why people would misrepresent themselves to gain a higher a benefit or a higher tax credit. Um, now, in my own mind frame, I couldn't understand why, because that wasn't correct. It wasn't legal in, in a lot of senses. Um, so I jumped at the chance. And we got our heads together, myself and Glenn and Richard, 
we pulled together a creation of what we thought the sort of skills were that people would be lacking, the skills that we thought people would benefit from. Um, and that's when we put teams together. So Scott, yourself, you were on the first programme. Um, and Jack that's on now, he's one of my project managers. Now, Scott, uh, sorry, J Jack has come in through the ranks, if you will. He came in as a coach facilitator um, to support the development of individuals. Then he went into delivering training and now he's actually extended his own development and gone into project management. So uh, for me, I'm getting a lot of softer skills because I'm understanding people a lot more and it has given me quite a drive for my own further development. And I have recently signed up and I'm doing a psychology course on the back of what Red Rose has taught me. <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. So, yeah, I mean, I remember um, getting involved with the leadership and the kind of the community feel and everything else we've got. About, I think we talked about it last time when we were on a platform like this as well. Uh, I think I've got a question for you, though. Um, with your job at the moment, how have you found it? I mean, evidently we know there's a lot more people struggling. There's a lot more questions being asked around, you know, the kind of entitlements that people are, you know, required to you know, live on and everything else. I mean, how have you found it, how have you found it lately, Shelley? Um, obviously, the, the blessing for me is that I'm working at home, which as a work with as a mum working full time, studying and all the rest of it, it's a lot easier to balance all your plates if you study in one place. So cutting out the travelling has been an absolute blessing for me. Um, it has been busier. It's been a lot busier. Now, I specifically work in tax credits. Now, the diagram over HM Revenue and Customs, who governs tax credits they're in the process of a transformation from a hundred and something offices down to 13 so there is a lot of change going on in the background to close a lot of the offices so as part of that transformation there's a lot more work coming into the locality that i work in and not only is it more work but it's also um more types of work so we're now going to be looking at the end-to-end -end product and we're likely to be the ones that turn the lights off at the building when it goes out, in all fairness. Um, we are seeing a lot more upset customers on the phones day in, day out. And I think it's only fair to say that, yes, we, we are only human beings at the end of the day. And yes, we do work for HM Revenue and Customs, um, but we are human beings and we do have our own difficulties. So we understand that people need that extra support and they need it now. They need it yesterday. They can't so, wait. And I think for me, I think, you know, on back end of asking that kind of question, it's like, do you fear that, because I know that you've been trying to teach all your staff the kind of things that we, we've all been learning together because we've been learning a hell of a lot of each other. You know, us as addicts, recovering yeah. addicts, and, and then we sell, the, you know, the HMRC side of it and the kind of box that you used to work out of. Are you? Do you fear that yeah. your staff might trying to transition more into the box type of thing because you're getting a lot more work put on towards yourself or do you think, you, you know, you could still make a difference to the kind of the leadership courses or to the mentors that we've had, you know, coming in and teaching us things and again, you know, vice versa, do you still think it can make a big difference? Absolutely, 100%. I think one of the biggest problems that we faced when COVID first hit was that the training was on a face-to-face -face basis and we were determined, Glenn and I had the conversations um, from the very off. Do we pause it and, and see what comes out in the wash or do we go in two feet first and see if we can try and make prepare for the long haul? And I'll be honest, Glenn, I think I think it's fair to say we made the right decision given today's news. Um, and I think the way that we we've undergone quite a lot of change in that obviously a lot of these sessions now are done by Zoom but the individuals that are on the program do have a one-to-one -one coach they can still have those phone calls the emails they can still um well up until this evening's announcement could still go and meet for a socially distanced walk or what have you i think being able to check in with people is vitally important because for, for us as um, non-addicts, non, we're not. I'm not in recovery. I never have been. Um, but it's still a matter of well-being. 
you still need that social aspect and if, if you live on your own or in a very small community or even if you're isolating having that contact point is absolutely key so we've tried to give people a purpose we've tried to keep that purpose there and we have seen a lot of growth come from that um dan is a prime example of what we've been able to create in this i sound like frankenstein don't i um in that when dan started the program i'd never met him before i just saw this young gent quite confident um very clearly good with it which from the off i did wonder whether he was going to get much out of it but i will let him explain what has come out of it because i've i personally have seen a lot of growth in can people I, such as jack and dan can i just say though shelly you know i'm only firing questions off it's like being playing devil's advocate because I know most of this stuff anyway. Yep. So for me, I know <laughs> I know the kind of compassionate woman that you are and how involved you've got. You know, you've jumped in with both feet. You know, you've been a you've been a brilliant help to us guys and everything else. You know, you've opened our, our eyes up with a lot more training and what have you. And you know, I, I've seen you now. You are someone that is literally living. You know, the kind of recovery that addicts are living at the end of the day because you've put yourself right on the front line, and I think that's beautiful. But you know, I just thought I'd give that to you. Um, but we'll let Daniel take over by all means. Yeah, thanks, Scott. Um, <clears throat> so I was just, I just had to remember when, when it started and I had to ask Shirley because I can't remember. I was only, uh, I've worked it out, I was 10, 10 days back from a relapse. And I walked into um, the building in Preston and you had all these professional people around us and you know, I walked in with my mate and he was just like, what's what's going on here? What have we signed up for? Um, but, you know, we turned up every week. Um, you know, HMRC put on the training. <clears throat> Pete and Emma did a bit of, the, bit of the training and it was fantastic being in Preston and getting out in the community and being able to not just sit down and learn, but go out and learn to... Uh, because you know people have different learning styles, and and that's what they've taught us. They've taught us. Uh, I've got a list, to be honest. I could I could go on forever what they've taught me, but you know boundaries, um, A B C Ds, uh, Microsoft Word. I've never used Microsoft Word in my life. I can use a, a computer basically, but um, when it comes to Microsoft Word and Excel, which I need now for my job, so you know that training was was. Uh, was good for me. Um, you know, we've we've learned le different leadership styles. Uh, the, the the end of the first th uh, cohort that we did ended in when was it, Shelley? March or April? Yeah, it was around then because it got pushed back a little bit, didn't it, with COVID? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. so we got to move onto this platform. Um, you know, at times it has been a struggle, but you know, you just keep turning yeah. up and. Yeah and open your mind to what these guys are teaching you and absorb it, um, you're going to get something from it. And, and to be fair to you, Dan, you, you know, it weren't just about turning up. I mean, the commitment that you showed as well at turning up, I mean, you were jumping on a train from Appington, coming to Preston, you know, yeah. you were making sure you were, you were committed, you were consistent, you yeah. know, and this is someone that, like you said, you know, let's not take that away from you. You, you knew where to come even after 10 days after a relapse. You know, yeah. and I think your development and everything else now, um, I mean, you shine, you, you shine out as one of, you know, a really strong leader today within you or that, you, you know, getting a job with Red Rose and everything else. But, you know, I'll let you carry on now. But, you know, th this is <clears throat> this is something else. Uh, I walked into that room and even though Shelley said that I appeared confident, I had no belief in myself still. It was other people that have, have shown belief in me and transform my thoughts so I, I can believe I can there is hope you know um but not only that though Daniel like you know I've seen you giving other people hope I've seen you giving other people a hand as well and you, you know start coming to you start getting your self-worth start getting your confidence back and yeah. albeit you know you had a really close friend here as well that you know he was helping along on his journey as well you know and look where he's at today. And again, hence, you know, being that kind of leader that other people want to follow. 
Yeah, and it, it sort of, you know, it sort of gave me the motivation. Like, all I've done through COVID up to uh, June or July when I got the job with Red Rose is volunteer. Just turn up and, and give what I can give. Um, and it's transformed, tr transformed into a job. Uh, I'm really happy. I deliver mind training once a week uh, where we look at um, ABCDs. We look at uh, the good life wheel. We look at emotional intelligence. We look at mindfulness and mentalization. Um, Tommy's been on my group. Um, how did you find it, Tom? It was excellent. Really was. It was delivered in a way where you had time to think and all, you know, it wasn't like rush sort of thing. So you could. But you this, could is a, this, is, yeah. this is all stuff that, that I've been trained to, yeah. to, to do. It um, was. It was really, really good. I enjoyed it. And I, I just want to give a massive shout out to the people that have completed it too. Um, I don't know the list of names, but, you know, to, to, to turn up um, for four weeks and then four weeks and then four weeks to be committed, um, I think it was only me from the start that's that's ended up at the end. But, you know, I've been through a journey with other people and it's fantastic, I love it. It's massive, that, and it's, it's a massive result as well, too, you know? I mean, I think we get, we, we get, we get empowered into thinking that, you know, we put the work up back end of this and everything else. And, you know, yeah. and then if anyone's like doubting that situation, you know, you are a prime example as to the kind of, coaching that you've been led towards, the kind of stuff that you're doing today and everything else as well. You know, and you're a shining example as well, Daniel. Uh, Glenn, did you have something to say about that? Yeah, um, I just wanted to come in and just say that um, even though you you felt as though you didn't have any self-worth at the start and that people believed in you because they could see the talent that, that was coming through. And, and I say that, I know you still need to get a bit better at boundaries, answering emails at 10 o'clock at night. Um, it's all awesome. them. <laughs> yeah, don't send them. But anyway, that's another story. Um, but no, but seriously, um, you have been committed. Like um, Scott said, you were getting a, a train all the way from Accrington to come down. And, and you know what I mean? You were, show, you were showing leadership skills right from the start. Um, what I would ask you is, what was the barriers and, the, and what you had to overcome to, to, to get to where you are today? Barriers for me? living in the middle of nowhere, um, transport. Um, you know, when people get early in recovery, they don't tell you how expensive it is. Um, you know, you need money. You need money, and that was a massive boundary for, uh, barrier for me, money. How did you help with that, though, Daniel? Red Rose helped me. They, they helped me with my train fares. Um, yeah, any, any, anywhere that I go, I used to get, I used to get it paid for, but... Yeah, I'm sure. Uh, why don't you tell Daniel? So obviously, you're not in a, you're not in the East now anymore, are you? You're living up in the in the. I'm in bed. I'm in Bedfordshire, yeah. yeah. And that's so right. I, and you, sorry, go on. So I, I work. I work from Bedfordshire. I still. I still have my flat in Lancashire. Uh, I plan to come back when when all this COVID's gone and um, really get stuck into my community in the East. <coughs> um, you know, get some volunteers through because th that's what we do. That's what happened to me. And I think that's what my journey is now. I want to get through uh, some volunteers with me and really make a difference. Thank you, Daniel. I just want to bring Jack in and uh, ask Jack about his experience about delivering the, you know, the leadership. And, and not only that, you know, what has Jack got out of all this as well? Yeah. Uh, so... I mean, I've been I've been working on on the leadership course um, since it started, really, uh, quite a while ago. Me and Daniel, uh, you know, and Shelley all came into this uh, at the beginning. Um, I mean, things that I've gotten from it really is um, it's kind of changed my mindset a bit on how how I work with people. Um, you're coming into a group uh, with red rolls. It's kind of unlike any other group. You used to um, used to being in work, and it's quite. Um, quite a almost dull vibe you know you're just there to do a job whereas you come to the the leadership program and everyone's there supporting each other trying to help each other uh, and really give each other the best experience they can each week um, and that's continued even after lockdown we've had to move to the digital platform and we still got people coming in every week being committed uh, it's great to see um, it's for me personally um, 
you know, facilitating, presenting the sessions, um, it's it has educated me a lot because I I didn't know these topics before before I had to uh, you know learn them and share that information with people. Um, so yeah, I've I've got a lot out of it. I've learned about my own boundaries, um, and I've actually exercised um, and expressed my boundaries with people uh, in general day to day life. Um, learned a lot about project management, things like that. Um, and to be fair, you, you build connections with more people. Um, you know, you can you can share your own issues. It's the people from who come in from the civil service, the coaches and things, you know, uh, we all help each other as well, uh, organise the whole thing. Um, it is a bit of a task sometimes, um, but it's good. It's really rewarding. It's a, I feel like I'm finally finally actually helping people rather than just helping myself yeah this is a massive thing as well because i mean in there i recognize the abcd i recognize the asset based community because i mean as a community of red rose and then yourselves being hr h sorry hr hmrc and we've come together and learning things off each other and broaching the gap as to you know the stigma around each other's roles in the community and everything else i think that's a massive thing you know being able to open up each other's world just to you know, different perspectives and different ideas as where we're coming from. Yeah, it's um, it really does make you uh, kind of grow a bit. You know, being being part of the program. Um, certainly, it's it's just it's just awesome how how many people you'd meet, how many different personalities there are, um, and it everyone you meet changes you a little bit. Um, it's good. It's good. I feel like I've just become an overall better person for being part of the course. Um, and I'm, I'm thankful for everyone who takes part and uh, keeps it keeps it going. Thank you very much, Jack. Thank you. And thank you for your experience as well. Uh, can, a few can I come in, Scott? Yeah, by all means. So, sh- a question to Shelley, because obviously, um, is Shelley still on? I can't see her. Um, yeah. Is she, is she there, Shelley? We lost her. I might have lost her. Technical issues. So my question was to Shelley, but um, you can answer it, Jack. So obviously, from the leadership um, course, um, obviously people build relationships and things like that. Did you see from um, the HMRC side that there was a lot of resistance of people wanting to do it because of the lived experience and stuff like that at the start? And has their mindset changed from that that program? Yeah. Um... Especially with, with so yeah so with some of the civil servants obviously they don't know what the, what the program is and they're a bit tentative you know when they when they read about the about the course um, to begin with they're not really sure who it is that we're working with or, or what it is uh, exactly uh, that they're going to be doing uh, but what, as soon as they do sign up um, you know the first week goes by the contact um, the participants start building that relationship you definitely do see a, a change in mindset and um, there seems to be more and more enthusiasm every single week it's more um, like they start really wanting uh, and look, looking forward to the meetings every, every week I know um, we've had we just had our first session yesterday for the new cohort um, and I had, a, I had a call with a couple of guys uh, you know who were who are coaches from HMRC side and they said they absolutely loved it and they can't wait for next week now. Um, whereas go back to Thursday and um, they were sending me emails saying, Oh, what, what is going to happen tomorrow? I'm a bit nervous. What am, what am I getting myself into? Uh, uh, but they found out and yeah, they're loving it. Natural human emotions. I think we call them. Natural yeah. <laughs> We've got Shelly back as well. The question was to Shelly, but Jack answered it brilliantly. So um, and not, not only from that, but Shelley, we've had you out volunteering. You've been out in the community, feeding the homeless. So from your perspective, you was obviously coming in it from, uh, at that time, it, it was cabinet office then, weren't it, when you was... Um... It was, yeah, it swapped. It was HMRC, then cabinet, then back, yeah. Yeah, and then obviously, because you got a lot of reward from coming out and doing some outreach with us, didn't you? Do you want to tell us a bit about that? Yeah, as I say, I think because my initial drives or my initial um, objectives were because I genuinely wanted to understand what other people have been through, what drives some of the decisions and changes in life. 
Um, and I had my eyes opened quite abruptly, if I'm honest, when I got in touch with Red Rose, because I, I think it's only fair to say that I've been quite lucky in life um, in that I've never encountered drugs or addiction or anything to that degree. So um, it, it was really very eye-opening for me to understand it. Now, one of the drivers for me was um, I knew a member of staff that had a heroin addiction. And as a manager, I genuinely did not know what to do, what not to do. I didn't know if it was a taboo subject, whether by offering those um, lines of support, whether I was patronising him, I wanted to understand more about what made them or made him make those choices and what I could do to help. Um, sorry. So, sorry? No, no, I was just going to say then, so naturally, as, as human beings, you, you know, we, we start to stigmatise people, don't we? But I think, you know, from your perspective, what you've just said massively, you've been open as to, you know, the situation at hand and you've been totally willing, you know, to explore you know, the other side as to why, you know, how has this happened? You know, what can we do to help this person? You know, is there anything more I can do as a human being to help? And that for me is beautiful. That for me is beautiful. It's, it's definitely helped me on a personal level in that obviously I understand people more, but I have tried to take it very much into the office and I've tried to make my staff and people like Jack, who I work with on a daily basis, more experienced and more open-minded um, especially when you're talking about tax credits in this day and age, do you know what I mean? We only have to turn on the news to hear that people are genuinely struggling. They're going to food banks to make ends meet. Um, whereas for me, sat in a, an office working nine to five, Monday to Friday, it, it's a luxury that so many people don't have. And I think it's made me a lot more humble and a lot more grateful for what I have. But I've also tried to push to my staff that actually there's reasons. Mm. People might be misrepresenting uh, how many children they've got or the childcare because they genuinely do not have food on their plates. Um, so a lot of what I've learned and a lot of what I have attained on an intrinsic or internal value, I do try to push into the way that I manage and the way that I um teach other people at work because as, as I always remember Pete you always saying you you um you bring one you, te you teach one do you know what I mean everything that you do try to expand it breed that knowledge and that energy into it so and that is what I'm doing and that is very much why you will see that this time this fresh cohort has got completely different mentors on it because the word has got around and more and more people want to understand more and more. We've actually got a waiting list now for mentors wanting to get involved and support. So as much as I would love to talk to you all night, Shelley, all night, and I mean that from the heart, uh, can we bring Emily in and see, <laughs> see if we've got any questions or like shout outs? Thank God for that. Cause it's like, Lord, um, at, I'm doing this course absolutely loving it and I've got a brilliant mentor Shelly she was my honestly she phoned me straight away we've had a really good chat absolutely love you all so I'm really enjoying this course um Jonathan Chapman I feared HMRC for the past few years due to my mental health issues I've had my head in the sand and I'm still struggling to communicate with them to sort my tax issues out but having recently met Shelly and the other HMRC team I am gradually plucking up the courage to face my affairs with HMRC um, so he said he's just started the leadership course himself and he's very excited and grateful for being offered this opportunity. Um, so Jonathan, that's Jonathan Chapman. Um, Use your coach, that's what they're there for. Use them. He's just put, I think Shelly's fantastic. Do you get like extra marks or something for I don't know. Because to be fair, yesterday was a really bad day. <laughs> um, I just want to say, I want to just remember, Donna Phoenix, can we just... Give lots of love to Donna. She's finally in detox now, second day in, but is in isolation at the moment. But she said Come she's on, Donna, power to the detox. Come on. She'll it. In with the women here at Chapman and Barker. Brilliant. Um, we've got Brad Duke, the Duke of Burnley. Hello, hope everyone's good. We've got Wade Rushton. Hello, all. 
Um, Howard James, how, hi everybody. Yeah, there's loads. Um, and then we've also got someone saying, hold on for Tommy. Massive respect to Tommy for coming on. Absolutely beautiful. I'm exhausted now. That's Get it. I think I've got Thank you, Emily. Get sharing and liking, guys, because there's always yeah. a problem. Yeah, there's always a prize at the end of this as well. Um, and, I, and I think, you know, just showing the big love for the guys that are out here already. And well done to the people that are, you know, in detox and the other people that are watching from different platforms and what have you. You know, big love to you guys. You, you know, we can't do this stuff without you guys watching as well. You know, uh, Shelley, Jack, Daniel, thank you very much. Thank Can I just come in? And just to finish off about the leadership. So if people want to get involved in this, it's not your, your normal open access course. And we have to, we identify people. So you've got to show a bit, a bit of commitment and that. So if you want to get involved, um, I'll put my number in the, in the chat and they can contact me and then we can get you involved in groups and then you can show that commitment and then we can get you on the next cohort potentially. So um, get joining because pick up the form. Thank you, Glenn. Thank you. Um, I was just going to move on just quickly to Purple Rooms and Peter in Purple Rooms. Peter Yarwood, can you hear us live in the community? Hi, everyone. Hello, hello, hello. Hello. Uh, We're just, um, it's a bit hard trying to uh, like, stick with it in the Purple Rooms because it's so it's someone's home, isn't it? It's like people are in yeah, and out. Like and, 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 you know, we're, we're really looking forward to the life story, though. And yeah. one of our guys has just come in with a, to show you with like a big, yeah, right, yeah. A big like, crate of cakes. So, um, I do have to say that we've got it, we've got, we've got it going on in the purple room. <laughs> Even though I'm interrupting someone's conversation yeah, with, McDonald's. with a McDonald's, so um, Peter, Peter, look, for pe for people who don't know what Purple Rooms is, do you want to give an explanation of what it is? So it's emergency accommodation. Um, it's where people who find themselves, um, you know, with nowhere to live in in this crisis, are uh, given somewhere to live. It used to be a a travel lodge, didn't it, Emma? Yeah. A travel lodge, and, and now it's turned into emergency accommodation. They're doing I think an amazing job. They are. They're doing an amazing job because you imagine staff today uh, are working with, you know, um, workmen, working with just general public, and then tomorrow they're working with the most vulnerable and, you know, challenging group of people who've got. You know, lots of lots of issues potential. and lots of potential. Emma's reminding me that alongside the challenges, they've got lots of skills and abilities and potential as well. Um, so come and tell them, then. You can you can say whatever you want. So yeah, I can't yeah. come on screen. Say you know, you can't we've got your mask on. Sorry, we're having a domestic here. Uh, <laughs> totally fine. Don't, just don't be booking a room in purple rooms, Peter. Yeah. But I do want to say, though, I know, before like, we, we move on, is that the leadership programme has been massive, not just for, for the, the individuals who've, who've gone, on, gone on it, but for the, for the partnerships, you know, the organisations, the staff members <coughs> who, who's been on it. That's that's really become apparent, and and I know in a, in the next week or so we're going to diary in a meeting to look at the sustainability of it going forward. Now I'd like to see people who who come through that project as you know key people who then go on to deliver to the next cohort, um, you know, and, and hopefully we'll be able to draw down some funding to create employment to do that. Um, one of the key commitments from Red Rose Recovery was that if you complete this leadership programme, we'll put you onto a, a bank of staff. So when, when we have sickness or when we have holidays, uh, we'll create a, an opportunity for people to get some employment or get some employment experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a beautiful thing. 
Thank you very much, Peter. I am going to move it on because we have got a full room tonight, but it's good to see you out in the community as well, my friend. And keeping safe with your mask on. Yeah, uh, hi, man, Craig. Right. Hello, Craig. Good to see you as well. I'm sure I've seen you before. Um, but welcome to the uh, Lancashire User Forum, my friend. Hopefully one day we will be able to, we'll be able to open this process and uh, get back to the large rooms. Get back to where everyone's commuting again, and let's just thought, you know, forevermore this will run on as well uh, as a dual process. Uh, but it is good to see you. Guess what? Guess what? Guess what? We're trying to reach ten thousand followers on the Red Rose Recovery Line Facebook page. We've got two thousand two hundred followers, and we need ten thousand. So follow us on the Red Rose Recovery Facebook page, please. Come on, guys, you've heard it there, you've heard it live. Uh, get out there, share it to your friends, get people to like the page, jump straight on it, and hopefully we'll get to hear more experience from the next guys that are coming up as well. So, right, let me set the platform. Tom, Tom Tierney. Now, Hello. You're going to come in with a, um, an experience of your own life journey, and do you yeah. know what? I'm not going to say too much. I'm just going to let you set the platform, and... Set the tone, my friend. Well, thank you. Right, everyone. Yeah, uh, I'm Tom. I'm in uh, recovery now. I've been in recovery now for I've been sober now for three months. Been in, uh, been in touch with the uh, Red Rose for three months and a week. I was dipping my toe in and out, in and out, and now I'm in the water. So uh, yeah, I'm not treading water. I'm moving slowly, you know. But uh, when I was when I grew up, I had a normal childhood. My mum and dad weren't drinkers. Uh, they weren't. They never. Uh, they never. Uh, and to this day, I, when I phoned my sister, my sister lives in Istanbul. She's been there thirty-five years. I always ask her, "Did my mum and dad ever argue?" Because all my life that my dad was alive, never heard them argue at all. So my my upbringing was brilliant. I was just a, a normal kid. Up in the morning in school all days, out football, in mum called me in for me to dinner, quick dinner, out playing football, call me in for me to grab a butty, make a chip butty, and scrape all the rest onto my dad's plate, run out, play footy and share the butty with me mates. That was it. Every day, seven days a week. Uh, and as I was getting older, uh, say 13, uh, tried my first spliff at 13 years of age. I uh, can't remember much what it done to me because I was just going, basically I was just following the leader if he was saying like, oh I feel like hungry and all that, I, well, well I feel hungry and all that, so it didn't really entertain me uh, so just used to hang around with them and you know, just do kid stuff uh, but one of my friends uh, got killed in a lift shaft uh, the lift that I was in uh, we used to go and run ahead, open the door, and wait for the others to come up and jump on the roof and shake it, just to scare the girls. And uh, fortunately, he fell down the side, and he was there for four hours, and uh, come out, and then they brought him out in a body bag, and then another body bag, and uh, we were just confused. He had to obviously separate him to get him out. But in them days, there was nothing. We weren't even offered counselling or nothing. So I don't even know if it affected me. We just got on with our lives, but it was still there. So when they coming up to the age of 16, my dad had a heart attack in the living room in front of me. Uh, we phoned the ambulance. Uh, the ambulance come, took him, yeah, kept him in for two days, brought him back. But when they brought him back, he, they never brought my dad back. Because he'd just sit there, wouldn't say nothing. My dad was like full of beans like me, full of beans all the time. Yeah, having a laugh, used to pick me. My dad was six foot eight, and he was a big man. No, that way, he was a big man. So my mates used to knock for me, because all they didn't knock for me. They wanted my dad just to pick them up and put them to the ceiling. That was it. But it was fun. It was fun. And then uh, my dad had another heart attack at home, got rushed into Western Hospital, uh, where he was put into intensive care. Uh, we got told that he wouldn't last two weeks. Uh, we was there most of the time. My mum, my mum virtually lived there. Uh, and it was hard for me to go and mix with my friends. 
but I wanted to be with my friends, if you get what I mean. I wanted to be with them. They were my comfort, you know, and uh, I just I just couldn't approach them. So I went into a world of my own. Uh, then we get to phone call seven o'clock in the morning. Could you just come down to the hospital as soon as possible, please? So we rushed down to the hospital, and there's my dad put in a normal ward in a normal bed, you know. And and he was like he wasn't talking. He was sort of like mumbling. But uh, he put his hand out and we held his hand and that. And he asked, he, he asked, could he have a bottle of cream soda, the old green cream soda? So me and my sister ran to the shop. <clears throat> then as we were running back, I always remember this, a nurse put her arms out to block the corridor. She went, no, no need to rush. Your dad's dead. And that's exactly how she put it. We went past the nurse and there's my dad, killed over, but he was looking up the corridor. He passed away. It was... Apparently it was his last lease of life sort of thing. But uh, after that, I got so much pressure put on me. Uh, it took me, when they brought my dad home, I couldn't go in and see him. So I'd run around the back, climb over the wall to get into the kitchen. And everyone was trying to push me in, you know, sort of like aunties and uncles, because they were all staying overnight for the funeral. And uh, I, I felt like everyone was against me, trying to make me do something I didn't want to do. So they left me and they're all drinking in the garden and stuff like that. And uh, the house seemed quiet. So I went in and I sat down. When I sat down, I could just see the top of my dad's nose. And I got up and I slowly stepped, stepped, stepped until I seen him. And he held his hand and I didn't let go for eight hours. Eight hours. So the people that were trying to push me there were then trying to get me away from there. So my head was mashed, totally mashed at that age. Uh, my dad's funeral come up and all I got off uh, uh, my uncles and my aunties and all that. You're the man in the house now. You're the man in the house now. You've got to look after your mum. Look after your mum. Uh, so we did try it. I had three jobs. My first job started at one o'clock, half one in the morning on the fruit market. From that, I used to go work into a shop. From that, I used to go second man on a van and finish about not far off 10 o'clock at night. By the age of 17, I was nearly burnt out. Started hanging around with the old, older lads, like not me mates, their brothers and all that. And it was just a bit, it was it was now when I look at it, it was just seeking reassurance. Because I never had, I couldn't ask my dad. I could ask my dad anything, anything at all, my dad. Uh, couldn't keep nothing back from my dad, you know, because he was my best mate. I could tell him everything, you know. I had to because if I went in and said he got battered, he'd batter me. <laughs> He wouldn't batter me, he was only he wouldn't like he'd just say, Well, get out there and give give him, you know, whatever. But uh, I missed that higher person in my life. So I started hanging around with the older ones and started drinking. Uh they they were doing uh, all kinds, you know, and they were giving me little I was I, I was like their little uh, go for, you know what I mean? But I was happy because I was I was surrounded by older men. I was looking at them like, not like a father figure, but like a security thing. Do you know what I mean? Uh, so started drinking with them and then I broke away from them uh, and started working for Schofield's Lemonade door to door. And uh, so we used to do this area called Wavertree and uh, we used to stop outside the Tappers Bar and uh, that's where I met my wife. Uh, the drinking still coming. The drinking was still there. Uh, I started drinking like ten and super then. Uh, the wife didn't drink, uh, and it just went more and more and more. I had no one to talk to because uh, we had our first baby, and I was so confused. I always wanted kids. I'd I'd love kids. I couldn't wait to have kids, and when the time come, I was scared. I didn't know what to do. I just didn't know what to do. She could turn to her mum. She could also turn to her dad. I could only turn to my mum. You know, I had no one to say. Like, my dad would say, ah, just f fucking get on with it, lad. You know what I mean? That's what I needed. I needed that push. You know, so as time went by, we had, an, we had another child, uh, our Alicia, uh, and instead of me opening up and saying I'm, I'm struggling with the situation, because I, I, my job then was with the 
Calgas then. So that was like starting at six o'clock in the morning and getting home at eleven o'clock in the night. And then the arguments used to start and all that. I used to have a couple of cans uh, in night. Then we free her to fall asleep, pretend I was asleep and go and get me stash. You know, and then she'd be standing over me in the morning with the kids saying, look at that kids. Look at the state of your dad. And, that. and I'd just go on one, start arguing and all that. There was a lot, there was a lot of uh, domestic abuse on my behalf in my relationship. You know, uh, it was on uh, one occasion physical. Uh, which I got arrested for. It wasn't like I restrained my wife by I, I grabbed hold of her throat. Uh, I was drunk, but that doesn't justify the situation, you know. And uh, I got I got arrested for that. Uh, I done a short little term in prison. Got a two year uh, restraining order not to go near my wife. I could see my kids. I could have my kids and all that. But she asked for the highest one, or she got the highest two years. I couldn't go near it. And uh, within that time, in that period, I was drinking more and more and more. And then it wasn't like it wasn't sending me to it, it sending me to a place I wanted to go. So I started drinking vodka then, uh, really heavy, you know, mixing it like in the pub, like like they do and all that. And then I thought, fuck, fuck it, you know. Started thinking it more and more and more. So Tommy, and, uh, um, so Tommy, you know, obviously I've heard a lot of, you know, a lot of loss, a lot of grievance, uh, a lot of responsibility, but no guidance. Um, and, I, and I hear you getting lost in all of that. And obviously, you know, you talk about a father figure and everything yeah. else. Um, yeah. I mean, what, what kind of, I mean, let's talk about recent events. I mean, sorry, I don't want to rob you whatsoever. You know, because yeah. I'm not the kind of journey that you've been on. You know, I'm, I'm dead compassionate, but you know where you've come from, yeah. the problem where you're at today. I mean, what kind of what kind of position did you find yourself in before you you, you know you start coming to terms with all this? A no win situation. A no win at all. There was only uh, two ways I was going. I was going to crawl on the floor flat for help eventually try and get on my knees for help and then walk for help or just die. Simple as that. Just die. Because my I've lost 20% of my living now. You know, and uh, I can't live a life that I led, I led. You know, but I am grateful for the life I led because it learns a lot of lessons. So, so sorry about that, Tommy. So where did we where did we actually pick up with you? I mean, because I've known you for a good few, I'd say for the beginning of the year. Yeah, uh, what what sorry, what had happened is last year, a uh, year and a half, I got took into hospital uh, because I couldn't walk again. And uh, while I was in there, I got my strength back. And one of the male nurses uh, abused the patient. So I went to report him and he came up to me and he was calling me a liar and he was calling me. And I was in there for three weeks, so I hadn't been drinking on it called me a liar and stuff like that. And he went to grab hold of me. So the first thing that I could do, because I was on the Zimmer, and was head button. But unfortunately, I think it cracked his nose or something. So the police come, took me out, talked to me, give me a ciggy, things like that. And that was it. Went back to bed. Three months later, there was a big bang. I'm trying to do uh, my own rattle, which I don't suggest to anyone at all. And there was a bang on the door. And what freaked me out is to get in the block, you've got to press a buzzer. But these were right at the door, and it wasn't like a knock. It was like side fisting. So I said, who is it? He said, the police. And I, and I nearly fell on the floor. He opened the door, and he asked me who it was, and blah, blah, blah. And he read me, me, me rights, I think. And everything was so fast. Put me in the cell. I freaked out, completely freaked out. They didn't know what was going on. I couldn't keep still. I was shaking like, like anything. And uh, he sent some guy in to sit with me. I think it was uh, Paul. Paul at the time, yeah. Yeah, Paul. Paul from Lears and Dad. Uh, <clears throat> he sat with me and then uh, talked to me, calmed me down and all that. And the cell door was open with one of the, one of the police people there. And uh, then they, they, they let me go. If I was on bail. And uh, I can't remember. It took me on. Was it you, Scott? When the when 
when did I meet you? It was all a blur. Everything was going too fast. Well, again, you, you know, when I come across yourself, Tommy, you, you know, you were still drinking. You were heavily into drink. Yeah. Uh, you know, I found you in a very sorry state. You, you know, you were someone that were wanting help, that were crying out for help, didn't know yeah. how to reach out for help. You know, um, I think I presented myself to you for a good six months, um, trying to get yeah. you out, trying to visit you at your home. Uh, I think what, what actually happened is we managed to, I found you in such a sorry state that we actually rung an ambulance for you. Yeah, you sneaked out some phone one. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, no, that was yep. the best thing that could have happened. The best yeah. thing I could have that happened. The best thing what saved my life was getting locked up because it's led to where I am now. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, I mean, so, sorry, uh, Glenn. So again, you know, once you got to hospital, I think we, you know, we got your detox, didn't we? So you did a detox in hospital. We got you into yeah. a care home afterwards. Um, you know, because yeah. Yeah, yeah, with all the twirlies, with all the twirlies. <laughs> you had physical ailments and everything else, and and yeah. from there, you, you know, it wasn't it wasn't the end of your drinking or anything else, was it? No. You, you know, you still struggled no. with you know the mental capacity of all the suffering and everything else that you've been through. And again, you know, we work from ourselves and from Red Rose and what have you. You know, we just kept on keeping on and trying to tap into Tom and trying to you know show him a, a better way of moving. And not only that, you know, to come from the back end of all that kind of trauma and all that kind of you know disappointment within within yourself in your own life and where you've gone and you, you know your disconnection with your children and everything else today today tom to actually see you, i'm massively proud i'm massively proud of the person that you are today i mean you bring a lot of joy you bring a lot of fun you know to the platforms the groups you know the kind of growth that you've got you know and for me you know that time invested was absolutely worth it because i've seen it all the time I knew it was there. You was the kind of person that already had that commitment that used to work in rehab, you know, that just lost his way, that stopped doing the kind of things that kept him clean, that kept him moving forward. And, you know, massively today, Tom, you, you know, you're a pleasure to have around. Absolute pleasure to have around. Yeah, it's like, you know, uh, you spoke to me the way I wanted you to. You never said the words I wanted you to. You said your words, but they were well heard. I had no choice. <laughs> <laughs> no, but going back when I, I, I was, I had the best of both worlds. Then I still had my drink and I still had you guys. But then uh, it comes to a stage where I, I wanted someone to come and pick me up, carry me over the shoulder, and make me better. And that wasn't going to happen. So the only way that could happen is I I met them halfway, and uh, so got my own detox in here again, which I shouldn't have done. Uh, four days on me, on my own on the settee, uh, and then come through it slowly. Uh, me walk and it wasn't that good then because of being lying down, uh, and then slowly starting to like grow like from the start again. And <coughs> I, I actually feel like I'm connecting to the person that I was supposed to be. No, not as supposed to be as that or what who I was. You know, joining back. I mean, this is the best recovery I've I've done rehab and worked in rehab. I've worked part time. I've got my MVQ level two. We've got you know stuff like that. And uh, I lived a but li even though I went home, I was still in rehab, home. And then I come away from it and went and uh, volunteered for the Amy Arnold Foundation for a year. But it was different because there was no like. It wasn't like giving and taking, giving and taking, you know, because I'm speaking to kids and it was just giving it, you know. And and one day I came home, went to Tesco to get some pasta. The woman said, hey, go fuck her and off it here. Do you want some? I said, yeah, give it two. One day off five years. One day off five years. But again, you, you know, coming from that, because that's still experience for me. You know, yeah. regardless, of, you know, you've been back there, you, you know, you knew the right things, what to do and everything else, but you've still got that experience and it's valid today. It's, uh, you know, giving hopes to other people as to what not to do. You know, yeah. kind of things that you do do today. Glenn, did you want to yeah. come in? Yeah, I just want to just want to say to me what, what Scott said, I echo, and it's been a privilege to be on your journey and see where you're at today. And I wanted to bring Emily in because, obviously, Emily does some of the groups and stuff like that. But not only what you're doing for yourself but you're also supporting other people now aren't you and you've come yeah. a massive a long long way Tommy so I just wanted to bring Emily in to 
to say, say a few words. Yeah, Tommy, I mean, I've been on this journey since I started um, using the service and I met you and there was lots of tears and we were both at a pretty dark place. But for me, Tommy, you are the most honest person I've come across. You, you know, I know about all those demons. You've been honest with me. You know what I've been going through regarding like domestic violence and things like that. You, you've opened up, you've been honest to me. You've not kept any secrets. And for that, I respect you because you're a different person. You're not that person now. And you know, you fought so many demons to get to where you are and you help everybody. I mean, you, you bring a smile to our faces, you, you dress up in the groups, you, you, you know, you, you bring a smile, bring positivity, you're there for everybody. You're just absolutely amazing. And you're such a strong person, you know, and when you have your bad days, you know, you connect with people, you, you help me out, you know, the people help you out and we're just there for each other. And I just think you're absolutely amazing. And you just on this journey, and you're just getting stronger and stronger. And I, I, you know, I love you to pieces. You know that you just bring so much for me and my, and my family. You know, you, you've helped us all, and you know, you've restored faith in me in 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 uh, in men. <laughs> you know, but at the end, <laughs> but I was faith. But you know, at the end of the day, you're doing. You you are amazing. You help so so many people in these groups. Uh, you know what? It is like a family. I, I get it. I get it. I get the love. Do you know what I mean? Uh, I do get it. I get. I feel warmth. I, I do. Because now I've got the best of both worlds. I'm doing my recovery and I've got a key for my front door. You know what I mean? And this is the most comfortable recovery I've ever done in my life. And if something's offered to me and Glenn will say and Scott will say and I don't feel like I can do it, I'll just say it. Do you know what I mean? I'll just say it. And that's so, that takes a lot of pressure off yourself. Absolutely. Absolutely. Emily, have we any shout-outs or any questions? Yeah. Um, what it, I just want to mention, we've got Lee Bailey Armour. He's really struggling at the moment. He's put the he, um, he and Emma Daggers knows him um, and that he's been in recovery for before. He's put his number out and I think... I think Glenn shared his number to reach out. He's just said that Lee, um, he was clean for three years. And he's been back out. He's relapsed for two years. He, he just feels like he wants to give up. But Lee, I've put on there that there's some numbers. He's put his number on there. We've given him the link to try and become a member. Um, you know, um, if Emma Daggers can see this, if you know, if she's seen it, um, you know, just to reach out. But Lee, Lee you've got a drone, you keep connecting. Yeah, and there's, absolutely. Um, you know, absolutely. There is a way, there is a chance, and there is a possibility. You know, get with the guys, get wrapped around the people that care. You know, the opposite to addiction is connection. Just remember that, guys. Massively, massively. Get connected, please. Yeah. That's it. That's, yeah. So, Lee, just reach out, get on the links, use the numbers, phone the numbers that have been given to you, Lee, and best of luck. Can I just say, maybe a possibility as well, um, you know, because I'm an advocate in a sense that, you know, a different type of recovery. I mean, we've got mutual aid. There's mutual aid out there as well. You know, the 12 steps of kind of recovery. There's, uh, there's AA, there's NA, there's CA, there's SARS. There's plenty of uh, an anonymous meetings as well that's going on out there. There's guys that will care, that will give you, you, you know, the 24-7 kind of, you know, help and guidance and suggestions because that's all we can ever do as addicts, recovering addicts. We can only ever try and give you guidance or suggestions and, you know, if, again, I will always, if someone's willing to meet me halfway, you know, I will stand shoulder to shoulder with that person and I will walk the rest of the, rest of the path of whatever we need to do, whatever's, you know, whatever's in mind. And Emily, yeah, I think, that... um, sorry, I think, um, Lee, they're just saying that, Lee, you need to get, you know, you need to connect, link up and get on the 12 steps as well, get on the um, 12 steps recovery. Um so there's lots of information, Lee. If you just read on the comments, there's lots of people. Um, but yeah, just good luck. Thank you, Tom. Thank you massively. Uh, again, you know, I'm, I'm privileged to have you a part of my journey as well because it's massive. You know, we share a common bonding, and you know, we always connect to each other on a level playing field. Because I always say when I'm facilitating groups, I am no different to anybody else. I've just got a little bit more time and a little bit more experience. And you guys. You know, keep me humble, keep me grounded, and it's a, it's been a privilege to work with you as well, Tom. It is. I mean, I look at I look at myself now. Is my problem was complacency. You knew that complacency. So I looked at this journey is everything that I learned in the past. Yeah, it's sitting there, and it'll mix into this other stuff I'm learning now. 
and I could only when I'm strong, them other bits can make me that bit stronger. No problems. Right, Tom, much love to yourself and thank you. And do you know what? It takes courage, it takes guts. And you know what? I'm, I'm massively proud of you for being on this platform tonight. You know, my heart sings out to you tonight, pal. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Tom. Massive, Tom. Right, so I want to move it on, guys. Uh, fucking heck. Uh, the time's flying by, isn't it? When you're having fun as well, you know, and when you're getting connections. So, Taz, uh, ah, don't be turning away from me now, pal. Don't leave me alone. <laughs> no, no, not after staying on for an hour. I'm not staying away from you. Oh, yeah, wait, you're right. Can I ask you a question? Right. Uh, you are my friend? Can I ask you a question? Oh, don't tell me this now. Yeah, go yeah, can you hear me? Oh, you're breaking up. You can't hear me. Hello? Hello? I can hear you now. Oh, brilliant. Yep, yeah. can you hear so me my, now? My question was irrelevant, although, how long did it take to grow the beard? Well, I've had it for 80, 18 months now, I think. <laughs> I'm trying to catch up, Taz. I'm trying to catch up. <laughs> so, again, Taz, um, obviously, you know, we're from the pressing community up, and I know there's massive things been going on with the massive change that we've had in COVID and everything else lately. Would you like to take us away and tell us everything that you're experiencing this moment in time, please? Yeah, um, so Preston Community Hub found itself in February 2020, so we've probably been operational just less than 10 months on the basis of trying to help and uh, provide a need for the community. With, with the COVID, as it hit us, uh, we saw obviously food banks and imported uh, food, uh, food agenda. So uh, as part of the food policy, food provision agenda, so we, um, li uh, again, the building was owned by Merge of the Axe, which is one of our partners. Um, so on the back of what they wanted us to do was to provide uh, something for the community. So we've taken it on board, um, got the local residents involved who uh, do an absolute amazing job in order to uh, run the food banks. We, do, we, we started off the operation seven days a week, uh, looking after the complete Preston area. Um, but obviously as time went on, we then obviously had to reduce the operations with students and volunteers going back to work. Um, so we operate now on a uh, Tuesday and a Thursday from 1 till 3 p.m. Uh, and we look after the residents of the St. Matthews and Fisher Ward. Uh, and then on a weekend, we don't let anything go to waste. So on a weekend, we then open up uh, as a food market. Um, so anybody with a £2 donation, again, open Preston Wife, come in and take whatever's on the table. A lot of it is fruit, uh, fruit and veg. Uh, sometimes there's a lot of bread, egg, eggs and milk. So whatever we can get rid of, we get rid of. Um, and then again, you know, there's, uh, it covers both, both parts of the communities in the sense those that are obviously struggling uh, financially uh, and, and need a bit of assistance and those that obviously want to help out and contribute in some way um, and then obviously leave a little do donation and take something with them. Oh, Saz, how, how do you keep up with this demand? How do you come across this food? Well, I think, um, again, it's, it's working with stakeholders, working with partners. Um, I think uh, one of the one of our biggest partners really was we set up the NHS Food Heroes uh, for, the, for the NHS staff, uh, which ran for, for six months in Fullwood. Um, and I think once that closed down, I think there was political reasons behind it, but anyway, we won't go there. <laughs> once that shut down, we um, kind of take... Uh, took some of the stock from there because a lot of it was going to waste and we kept that going. Uh, but again, Morrison's is one of our main partners. Uh, we've obviously got Red Rose Recovery, Glenn and Scott do a lot of work with us. Uh, where we've got the initiative and the, uh, the Greg's um, meals uh, that, get, that get used to it. We've got obviously private people that will give a bit of donations here and there. I've got to um, you know, thank Big Local um, Community Foundation to who provide a bit of support financially when we uh, initially set up. Uh, but again, it's working. It's building partnerships, building bridges, working with your networks. Again, you know, Scott's, Scott's been absolutely amazing. And so has Glenn. You know, I can't take any thunder away from Glenn as well. Uh, in regards to providing um, support, you know, motivation. If nothing else, somebody else to speak to in order to uh, run um, the, uh, the food bank itself. And again, you know, we work with uh, the local schools. So Fishwick Primary School is one of our main partners. So we provide um, the community hub as a base for, for their parents um, and we have a special day for them on Tuesdays. Uh, we do a bit of work with St. Matthews, but again, um, it's just getting everybody and anybody involved. And, and we've got, you know, from a team that was uh, like three or four aging men when we started off, um, 
we've now got a complete full diverse team. We've got um, Brandy who represents the black community. We've got Claire and Pete that are local residents. And we've got uh, like young, young kids as well that are getting involved. So, you know, it's, it's, it's become an amazing team. People are really there, genuinely there, to help and make a difference. So, but, on, know, a, sorry, on. Sorry, on, a, on a personal effect, how has this opened your, uh, opened your world or your perspective on oh, what's going on? Press and born and bred. I've lived in the Bishop area all my life. I'm 41 years of age. Um, I know I look young. Um, but I think uh, the way it's opened up my eyes is on the basis that I never knew that there was so much food, food poverty within my own area. And that's me being completely honest, you know what I mean? I've, you know, I'd like to say I'm slightly streetwise. I probably didn't spend a lot of time on, on the streets, but, um, you know, I mean, having a job, I mean, I work for NatWest Commercial and NatWest have really provided me with the time and effort flexibility that's required in order for me to obviously um, um, conduct the role of the PCH that we're trying to do. So I think it's opened my eyes in the sense that when, when you live in the area and you've not known that there's so many people struggling, it's like, it's, it's wow, you know what I mean? There's so much we can do as people, so much we can do as a community to, um, you know, food's just the tip of the iceberg. There's other areas. Again, you know, Samuel Street, we've got the flats. And again, you know, this is where Red Rose Recovery and, and a working relationship will hopefully be established going forward. But there's, uh, you know, there's issues within the community when it comes to drugs. Um, people on, on the streets, young youth. So there's a lot of work to be done, but it's it's a very it's a deprived area. Let's face it, St. Matthews and Fishwick are probably one of the main, one of the main five deprived areas in the UK. Um, mm -hmm. So th so there's a lot of work that needs to be done, and I think we've 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 initiated and started um, the food bank. And obviously, you know, one of the things I want to do is the project itself, Pressing Community Ed, uh, Hub. We want it to be a community-led project. So anything that we do, we want the community's serious involvement in it and we want to provide services to the users that will use it. So I think we've got a bit of a slideshow from yourself as well, haven't we? Tess? Yeah, yeah. come on, Glenn. You can share the contact. You can take this away, technicalities, everything else. I mean, probably like a whiz kid at the computer by now like myself. Bear with me, guys. Uh, do we have, you making a call? No pressure. No pressure. No pressure whatsoever, Glenn. Hey. Yeah, so that's what the building looks like at the moment. So that's uh, the old YMCA building on Samuel Street, folks, if you are uh, aware of the area. Um, so, again, we did it as a competition, so uh, a couple of um, twin girls came up with the uh, design idea and the logo, uh, which kind of obviously is probably what we wanted to achieve, uh, a, bit, a bit of togetherness. Um, Glenn, can you go on to, yeah, do you want to press uh, the presentation, Sam? Yeah, cool. Yeah, so we'll just go, current activities I've probably spoke to, uh, spoke about in regards to the food bank and the food markets. Um, so we'll go on to the... Uh, and I think the picture itself, uh, a picture can be, you know, they say a picture sells a thousand words. And I think that picture in regards to diversity and what we are actually achieving at the moment sends a big message to them that we're open for business for everybody. It doesn't matter which part of the community you're from. Come on, come and speak to us and get involved. Um, and I think um, the next slide gives us more of an insight in regards to um, the partnership that we currently have. You're looking for, you're looking for the uh, presentation slide, aren't you? Glenn. No, no, I'm just um, doing it. I'm trying to multitask and um, I'm not really good at that, so I love that, so I'll just um, I'll just do it. When you want me to move the slides on, I'll, I'll move yeah. them on. Yeah, so that's the food bank. So that's uh, the local mosque uh, within the area that's involved. Morrison's, who's been a massive, massive player, getting phone call from them like once every other week when they've got large uh, fruits and veg to provide, and sometimes even like chocolates, which, which go down the tree. Uh, local trust have provided a bit of funding. Uh, Community Gateway, we've been working a lot with them and uh, Red Rose Recovery, as we've alluded to. Um, the, um, the next slide uh, gives you just some kind of examples regards to what you what you can get from the uh, the food bank. And again, I think the way we run our food bank is different. We don't provide parcels. Uh, we we take the diesels, obviously, of the people that come in and then on the back of what they do, they just come in. It's a, I say it's a free-for-all with respect. Uh, what I mean with that is you come in and choose what you want um, and you can take one large bag. 
Um, so we rather have rather than making food parcels or food bags, we thought we'll let the the service users decide what they will actually have and what they will eat, rather than actually having uh, uh, food going to waste. Um, so that's how the food market works. The next slide tells us more about a food market. That looks a bit like booze, isn't it? Booze might be my main, get me in trouble for marketing there. Um, the next slide um, is an example of what sort of stuff is available on a Saturday, Sunday. So for a £2 donation, you can get bits and bats um, and then fill a bag up again. Uh, some, there's obviously a lot of... Uh, Aldi's another partner on a weekend, uh, which tends to give a lot of food and veg. And so yeah, most, most of it's packed. There's always bananas and stuff like that. So, you know, we're trying to get... I think everybody on the street now knows how to make a banana pie or a banana bread or whatever they call it. Um, so we do sometimes give recipes when we get a lot of stuff. So, you know, just to keep them more active. Uh, the next slide, uh, Glenn, um, gives you more in regards to what our future activities. So I think as a team, we, I mean, we meet once, um, once, every, uh, every, once a fortnight on a Wednesday and try to get our ideas together in regards to what we want to do and how we want to achieve uh, our aims and objectives going forward. Uh, and I think uh, slide nine, uh, Glenn, will probably give you a bit of a little statement of what we want. So again, it's a community centre that we, and again, it is anticipated to be community led. So the more people that we get involved from the local residents, the more we can actually achieve. But again, it's a community centre with, with a purpose, you know, social support, public information. So like good old grassroots old community centres and what we're, that's what we're trying to achieve. Um, to be there as an information centre for those that need it, you know, toddler groups, you know, tea and coffee for the elderly. Again, mental health is a big issue. So it's when we can, again, I know we're going through another lockdown, um, but when we are able to obviously uh, meet up again, is to be there, you know, for our elders, for our youngsters, you know, a mutual respect for all, all ages and size uh, groups to, to get involved and uh, meet up and um, have those kind of conversations like Tom alluded to. You know, I mean, sometimes you can be in dark places, but if you've got somebody to talk to, um, hopefully we can make a difference together. Well, then next one, I think, uh, tells you a bit more in regard. Yeah, so health and support. So that's what uh, I've just uh, mentioned in regards to what we want to try to achieve. Uh, and I think the health and support comes in two ways. One is in regards to the health and support guidance that we can provide once we're established. But at the moment, health and support that we need is probably volunteers, people that want to get involved. I mean, I've given you the next slide, which is like a potential plan. So we're working with an architect at the moment. So these are what our meetings are all about. So again, the main hall, we want to try to get some kind of sporting activities and private functions to get it ready and set up for that. Kitchen. So again, I'm very passionate. I like to cook a bit myself. You know, I mean, we've, we've earmarked 25 grand for a brand new kitchen. But again, it's going to be like an industrial kitchen where we can serve food to the community. But more importantly, when we have like, uh, we've just had the half term week where we provided free school meals. But the other option we're looking at is, uh, with that 25 grand, is to, to provide that weekend, to provide a hot meal for a child every week. So we know seven days a week that they're actually all getting a hot meal. Uh, again, you know, with the food poverty agenda. Um, so hopefully if we can get that done, that'll be a massive tick in the box for me, a personal satisfaction, a personal uh, achievement. Because uh, again, you know, having, having children walking down the street and seeing what I saw this week with the hot meals that we provided and, and uh, the Greg uh, butties that come, that have come in handy, there's a lot of work to do. Um, so the next slide, um, probably on the back of that is the current needs. So I put, obviously we, we've got a leaking roof, uh, the kitchen itself, and rather than putting refurb, I put TLC. So we need a bit of tender loving care to get the, to restore the building back to his, uh, back to his original content of what it used to be. It used to be an old wine building, so if we, can, if we can get it back um, to some kind of um, where it's been used and accessed, because I think it is an unloved building, an absolute fantastic building with a lot of potential. But again, with a bit of funding, with the right people, we can actually achieve that. So massively, we're looking towards a community and anybody that can give you a hand on it. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So a shout out maybe to, to people within the area that might have businesses, uh, that might be roofers, that might have some kind of thing that want to help and make a difference. By all means, do get in touch with us and we'll see how we can work together on that one. Uh, and I think that probably the next slide is uh, the second to last one, my friend, Glenn. Yeah. Yeah. So if you want to get involved, the email address and the mobile numbers are there. Uh, in any way, shape, or form, whatever you want to get involved in, by all means, do. It's not always about money, you know what I mean. Again, funding can go a long way, but even if you spend an hour or an hour of the time, where it may be paying, coming down if you're architects or project engineers, coming down giving us some ideas, whatever it may be, it all adds value. And I think uh, the biggest important thing about it is working, because again, if you're if you're from the Fishwick and St Matt's area, it is one. I think it's one of the best buildings we've got in the area that it has a huge potential, but it's not used to its full potential. 
And if we can get that happen and make that happen, I think we'll make a make a massive impact on people's lives. So, so I want to say I want to I want to say a massive shout out to you know the people in the community that feel that they can help towards you know build on this dream that not so much a dream but you know the potential of the building and you know everything that you're trying to move forward on. But not only that, you know think about this, guys. You know poverty can hit anybody. You know mental health can hit anybody. You know, we're not just talking about people in addiction. We're not just talking about people that, you know, suffer trauma and everything else. Because I think with the current climate and everything else, you, you know, for me, it's pretty worrying. It's pretty worrying. And if you're thinking about connecting people, and even if you feel we can give a little bit back, then by all means, please, please get involved with the uh, Preston community. Oh, because I think it's a massive, massive job and, and already an achievement that uh, the improvement has. And I think, if I'm right by saying that, You've got a, a lot of learning from this as well. Oh, absolutely. Like. Yeah, um, yeah. You, you know, you learn on the job. You learn, you learn as you go along. And I think, uh, you know, one of the things that you've uh, mentioned in regards to the program that you do, um, uh, the leadership program, that's something I'm really interested in. And that's quite a far, you know, again, you know, once you meet people, you see their potential and what they and their commitment and what they're good for. There's probably three or four like-minded people from within our organization that could probably learn a lot of new skills, a lot, you know, I mean, from, from the program that you've been doing. So hopefully we can work together and look at ways of how we can, you know what I mean? And, and I think one thing I always say to people is if you can make, if you change one life or change somebody, and I think Tom's a fantastic example, you know, something that really emotionally moved me. I think if we can get somebody like, if we move somebody or change a person's life like Tom's, oh, you know, it's a tick in the right box. And and I think that's what we need, need to be. Yeah, we need, we need compassion. We need just compassion and drive. With them two things, and then can, connecting other community hubs or communities, or, you know, places like ourselves with Red Rose, with yourself, having the opportunities to be able to move forward in, in the training that we need as well. Because, I mean, it is the compassion and everything else that comes out first. Then Absolutely. the drive, and the commitment to do something and then the learning and maybe a few skills on the back end of that and just sharpening the tools that we've already got. So I'm going to bring Emily in, uh, see if we've got any shout outs, see if we've got any questions. Um, yeah, well, basically, um, Glenn, I don't, I've sent you a number for that Lee because he's struggling, he's trying to get older, someone, he's asked someone to ring him. So I've just sent you that in the messages. So Lee, hopefully someone will get hold of you, mate, and I've got your number, I've passed it on. Um, I've put out the um, number for the Preston Community Hub uh, for people to get involved. Um, you know, I've told the massive community spirit, I mean, there needs to be people getting involved. I've the emails on the comments as well for people to uh, hopefully get involved. Um, and that's fantastic, Taz. What you do is absolutely amazing. I just think that's awesome. And hopefully people in the community can help you and get involved as well. Oh, thank yeah. you. Well, thank you. Again, it's, there, it's there for the community and we want it to be used for the community. So again, you know, the more people that come to get together, the more ideas, the more, the more people we can help. Absolutely amazing. Yeah, well done. Definitely. No problem, so hopefully the information's out there so people like and share it. So hopefully you'll get some some calls or emails and people will get involved and help. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Thank All you, right. guys. We're gonna, we're gonna pick a conversation up as well, Taz, aren't we? Around them um, and playing for a brick fund. Um, yes, we will we will do with um that roof. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we'll do that, definitely. Because again, you know, I, uh, I was speaking to Scott and obviously Scott's told, told me his experiences and his life experiences. There's a lot around the corner, there's a lot of flats, you know what I mean, that could probably use that, uh, those experiences. And maybe, like I said, if we change a life, you know what I mean, from like Tom Stoller's, obviously, his, um, his life in prison. And, you know, I think stories like this, if it goes out there, and they're not just stories, it's true life experiences. They're emotional, it's telling you exactly what the, the trauma, the... Uh, the situations that they've been that they had to endure uh, as part of life, and if you can do that with 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 our people and tell them it's not always rosy, and we could change lives, and yeah, anything that makes some positive impact, we're all there with, with you. Yeah. So thank you again. Thank you very much. Taz. Thank you, Taz. Yeah, and thank you for your patience, and thank you for your you know your community spirit as well. And thank you for everything that you give back. You know, it's all awesome. Thank you. Pleasure. Taz. Thank you again. Brilliant. So. Just to move, the, move it on a little, I mean, we've had a really interesting night tonight, you know, from leadership to the community, now back to, you know, I mean, life stories, but now we're going to bring Elizabeth Corderbank in. Um, and Elizabeth is going to talk all about the kind of work that she's doing in the community as well. And we might as well keep it as a community spirit. So see the big smile going off as well. And I see a lot of passion coming from yourself, Elizabeth. 
Hi, yes, yeah, so I'm Elizabeth. Um, I'm a young persons worker and I cover the Preston area. Um, so I work for We Are With You. We used to be called Young Good Action. So we are the same company. People get confused over our name change all the time. Um, so yeah, we work for anyone up to the age of 25 around the Um That can be whether someone's struggling with somebody else's substance misuse or their own substance use, and we can look at either just reducing it or stopping it completely. We aren't abstinence-based, so we just work with the young person's kind of what they want to achieve and what they want to get out of it. Um, we, we work with, like, families as well. So we've got a family offer at the moment for any young person that gets referred into us, um, the family can access help as well. And that's just not just, like, the parents. It's for anyone that, like, can be affected by their substance use as well. Um, and we do family group work sessions. Um, but obviously, if they wanted that one-to-one -one support with our family worker, we can offer that as well. Um, we have a young person's web chat as well that we've just started. So we have a web chat for everyone on all the time, nine till nine, Monday to Friday. And then I think it's 12 till six, Saturday and Sunday. But I mean, that definitely could be wrong. <laughs> I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, our young persons one, that's just like young persons workers like me working on it. And that is six or nine Tuesdays and Thursdays. So we do group work sessions in like schools, colleges, children's homes, supported accommodation as well. Um, so say if like that needs identified, then we can go and do a big group work session. And then that sometimes leads to the one one to one work as well that we do. Um, yeah, so we're also doing a family phone in lines as well on a Wednesday. So that's 10 till 12 and 4 till 6. So that's for anyone to ring up and speak to one of our workers. It could just be about like anyone's substance misuse that they're concerned about. So have you found it in the in the current circumstances and you, you know everything that we're going through at this moment in time? Have you found it easy to transform to virtual platforms? Is that what you've done even? Um yeah, so it's been been really strange I remember being back in the office in March just before the whole lockdown hit and I printed a little bit of paperwork off and I thought I'll be back in the office in like two weeks it'll be fine yeah how many months is it now like eight months later still working from home yeah. um yeah we're doing um either something over the phone or we're doing video call ones just depends like what they find most comfortable doing so we are still offering like sessions to people but it's just all remotely at the moment and how did you find the young people picking up with that um a bit hit and miss to be honest um i think there's a few that would probably engage a little bit better if it was face to face and i completely get that like i find it so much easier to work with people as well when it is face to face but it's just something we've just got to kind of deal with at the moment so we're trying to trying to make it as as best as we can um but yeah it's going it's going okay it can only get we're just trying to get used to it still i reckon yeah and this is it i mean i've known you for a little while now uh Elizabeth, and you, you know i know the kind of compassion and you know the kind of drive that you bring to your own um to your own organization and it, you know and, I, and i'll reiterate that that it has it's been really difficult you, you know in connecting and communicating with with people, especially if they've not got the like the kind of devices that they need as well to actually connect to these kind of situations, and and it, and it has been more so difficult with people like that. Because then I don't know if you're like me, but then we feel like we're failing people as well. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know what your feelings are around that. Yeah, definitely. Like I would, I'd love nothing more than to get back out in the community and go and see people face to face. I feel like it's a lot. It's a lot easier to build that relationship as well, a lot faster when you're face to face. Um, but yeah, I think schools have been pretty good. Uh, I'd say if like the young person doesn't have the technology at home, they'll set that up in schools for us as well. So that's 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 really good. And I think um, a lot of young people are asking like the families for help as well around that. So it's getting a whole family approach, which we didn't have as much of in the past. Yeah, right, Glenn. Hello. Sorry, I thought you wanted to say something then. No, no, um, no. Obviously, I've met um, Liz and Elizabeth. We 
with whichever you like um, before, because you come to one of the loves uh, when we're doing it face to face, didn't you? And I know that obviously from our service, um, transforming onto a digital platform, how have you found it? Have you found um, more young people coming forward with obviously the current situation in the pandemic, as in like mental health and things like that, or, or has it tailed off? Um, I'd say our referrals have kind of stayed steady like since March um we're not we didn't get as many because we get quite a lot of our referrals from like schools colleges universities and obviously because they weren't seeing like the young people the mm -hmm. the struggle the struggles that they were having at the time weren't being picked up as much so it started to pick back up again now um but yeah we just got to kind of see how see how that goes we're trying to um increase our social media a little bit more at the minute as well so and we're hoping that this new young person's web chat that we've got because I know that even myself I'd prefer to speak to someone over a web chat than pick a phone up and speak to someone over the phone like that yeah I'm not yeah it scares me a little bit still <laughs> but we're hoping that like young people will find it a lot easier to try and get get that initial speaking to somebody and then, because I feel like once they've spoken to someone, once that initial referral has been made, that's the biggest step, really, isn't it? So, yeah, I mean, you talk about referrals. I mean, how does someone go about, you know, referring someone? Uh, and what kind of person is it that's referring to you? You know, is it, is it so is it on a basis? So I think, you know, all right, I'll be my son. Uh, he, he may have a problem. You know, how do I go about this? How do I get in touch with yourself? Okay, so anybody can refer somebody to us. It's just a referral form that we've got, and that can be either emailed out and you can fill it in yourself, or you can phone up and we can do a referral over the phone and like we'll just take information off you. But like, all that has to happen is the young person has to consent to that referral. So if they don't want to work with us, because we're not as, like, it, we're a voluntary service, so if that young person doesn't want to work with us, they don't have to it's it has to be their choice um but so the young person they can self-refer to us so they can just phone us and we can take all the information off of them over the phone um or we can like i said send out the referral form then they can just email us the referral form back we get referrals off like parents teachers um staff members at like children's home supported accommodation um we get them through like young offenders as well, probation. So yeah, we take professional referrals as well. So I say if there's anyone under 25 that wants to access this one-to-one -one support up, then yeah, give us a ring or if you don't feel comfortable ringing yourself, get on our web chat on Tuesdays and Thursdays or whenever, um, or get, get somebody to ring up for you, but just make sure that you're there to give them time. I mean, again, I can imagine that you're going to come across a lot of young shy you know individuals might be what is what's the major barriers that you come up towards or what is the major concerns around the younger kind of you know clientele of today um i think with young people now um there's a lot more of like a rise in cannabis use as well and it's a lot seen as a lot more sociable now than it was a few years ago so that's why we do sessions just around like drug advice as well and drug education. So people don't even need to be using drugs themselves to come in and work with us. We can just do a few sessions so that they've got someone that they can feel safe asking questions about drugs too. Because I know like sometimes for young people, it is still a bit of a taboo subject like with parents and stuff and teachers. So we can be that person to do that. But yeah, it's... It's trying to get that relationship with a client when it's over the phone as well, which we're getting better with. <laughs> so uh, just, uh, and you don't have to answer this question. This is just me. My last name is Parker and I'm very nosy. Um, yeah. How did you find yourself coming about in this kind of work, Elizabeth? Um, so I came straight from uni. So I did a forensic psychology degree in Liverpool. And then I was coming towards the end of my degree and I was like, right, I've got no job. I don't know what to do. And I did kind of just fall into this job. 
I didn't have any previous experience of working around substance misuse, but like jumped in feet first and yeah, that a man I've kind of like so I've been working with we are with you now for probably just under a year and a half. Um and the amount I've learned about like substance use addiction and myself as well has just been a crazy amount. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry I got a little bit personal there, you know, but uh, I think for me, you know, the experience that you are picking up and, you know, the kind of people that you're reaching out to and the kind of people that you're helping is amazing. You know, it's absolutely amazing because I think we find in uh, in in our organisation that, you, you know, because we get a lot of older clientele um, that, you know, sometimes we find it a little bit hard to, you know, identify with the people that sort of like had 20 odd years of addiction and it's like flipping out, well, I'm not like you, you know what I'm saying? And it's that, I suppose it's that street mentality and, you know, like you said, the cannabis as well being acceptable, you know, in a wider community and what have you. And so, you, you know, it's always good. It's always good to know that, you know, we've got guys like yourself that's going to sit there and, you know, give them the, you know, the, the absolute basics of the education, but not only that, around the drugs, around themselves, you know, around the kind of aspirations they want in life as well, you know. And um, where were you when I were 18? <laughs> yeah, but what we kind of find with a lot of young people is they don't want to change the substance misuse yet. It's like the parents that are saying, you need to change it, you need to stop, you need to do this. So it's kind of doing, doing work with the young person kind of around that how to change behaviours for the future. And, you know, just kind of planting that seed hoping that it'll grow and you know sorry about that off cut uh, off cut comment uh but you know for me obviously you know my parents are nagging me it's like you know you need you need you need me it's like listen jog on i've got loads of years left yet you know but let me just tell you if you want to look as ugly as me after 26 years of addiction be lucky that you've still got your life to sit on a platform like this today guys any young guys that are out there you know, I would say, grab into this kind of organisation, grab into Elizabeth, grab into her team, you know, get a little help, get a little insight. You do not have to suffer any more pain, you know. And for me, pain is in the resistance. So try not to resist, you know. It's a, it's a beautiful life out there for people that have got the drive and the passion, you know, and, and any kind of warps of life, any kind of estate, any kind of growth that we've had, you know, the, the good times, the bad times, you know, there's families, whatever it is, you know, there's help and experience out there for you guys, you know. Uh, I'm going to bring Emily in, see if we've got any questions, see if we've got any shout outs, but thank you, Liz. All right. Well, as, as a life experience, Elizabeth, that sounds amazing, because I, like I say, I'm, I'm in recovery myself, but I've got a 21 year old who's in the, on the crazy train of um, denial, sort of knows what so I'm the mother you need to do this you need to do that you need to so that is amazing and there is help out there um I didn't actually even know about that so that's that's really good um John Roberts has put love this Elizabeth great worker I volunteer with you sheds Wales and it's so great to be able to give back from lived experiences as well um Barbara English is sat making Christmas decorations for prisoners families I just put another thing that Red Rose contributes to. Um, so, yeah, I mean, if there's a link or a number you want me to put on, Elizabeth, on here on the comments or anything that I can forward to the guys that, you know, to help them out, you can do. Yeah, I'll, um, I'll send you over our number now and then our website as well. And then right, okay. all the information no. on the website, so I'll send sure. you that to put on. And yeah, if anybody... Thank you. If anybody misses that, they can also contact us and we can signpost you into their service as well. So if you've got any young guys, what's the age range? Is it 16 to 25? Am I right? We don't have a lower age range. Oh, right, okay. So whatever, okay. Up, to, up to 25. Right, okay. Right. When you go out and deliver training, I mean, what, what's, the, what's the youngest you've delivered training to in a school? Um... Oh, I'm trying to think of what the youngest person I've worked with is. Um, I think my youngest client has been nine. nine. So just whatever. And we get a lot of younger ones because we work with them, um, children, and is, parents. And it is just a reality. Yeah, and it's just a reality, you know, of today's life. And I mean, obviously, you, you know, the, the kid is coming through. I mean, because I probably roughly around that age as well when I 
when I first started picking things up, you know. And again, and it's just the reality, you know, just be sure parents, just be sure, you know, teachers, just be sure, you know, if anybody's got concerns, please reach out. Please reach out. You don't have to be on your own. You've got a fabulous team there that will give you all the support and all the training that you need as well. Yeah, Elizabeth, definitely. Thank you very much. It's all right. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for coming on. Thank you. Elizabeth. And thank you for your patience as well. Um, blown away. Absolutely blown away. Uh, <laughs> we're going to move it on a little now. Now, we've got Emma Simpson from the Richmond Fellowship. Uh, as your beautiful sign tells us uh, much so about uh, back here. Um, <laughs> let's introduce yourself and would you like to come in and tell us a good word that you're doing as well, please, Emma? Yeah, so, uh, hello. Um, hello. <laughs> you'll have to forgive me because, to be perfectly honest, I haven't worked for this company for particularly long, so I'll do my best to uh, give you the overview. So, um, the Haven, Central Lancashire, which is where I am, is um, based in the middle of Preston. It's quite near the docks. Um, and we are a charity that works with people who are having mental health challenges. So um, what we offer is short-term therapeutic interventions. So we're not a talking service. We're not a, a counselling service. We're looking at giving people coping skills and trying to improve their, their kind of reactions and responses to the, the hardships of life. Um, we signpost to lots of other places, including yourselves, and we would, you know, signpost to We Are With You and lots of other places. I've only recently heard about Preston Community Hub, so that's gone on our signposting list as well. But um, anybody can come to us. We work with people from the age of 16 and upwards, um, to up to any age. Um, and we will look at sort of we don't look at past trauma. We don't talk about past trauma. We'll obviously cover it if that's what's causing some of your issues. But what we're really looking at is the future and the ways that people deal with the, their life that they're living now. Um, and then signpost counselling if that's more, more appropriate for them. Um, people will refer, we prefer self-referrals because um, we find that people who self-refer refer are more likely to engage with the service. Um, but we will take referrals from kind of GPs, um, the start team, uh, the home treatment team. So that's um, a big part of the referrals that we get as well. Um, and we also have other houses in the Lancashire area. So um, we've got a Willow House in Chorley, which is a crisis house, which is residential. So people can go and stay for up to seven days and do similar interventions to what we do here, but actually um, it's much more intense because they're, they're in there, they're doing it um, seven days uh, in total and they'll do more sessions than they would do with us. So, um, you know, people who are in, really in need would probably access that service. Um, there's a haven in Blackpool, there's a haven in Chorley, similar to what we do here. Um, so depending on your area, you can access those services. Um, at the moment, we are, well, I don't know, I've not seen the announcements from today exactly, and I don't know how that's gonna affect things, but um, we have been doing face-to-face -face, uh, at the minute, um, as much as we can, obviously masked up both us and the service users and um, socially distanced as well, but we do telephone and video Zoom support as well. So we're trying to, reach as many people as we can still, even in the current climate. Um, it was quiet. The building did shut down at the start of lockdown and it got a little bit quieter, but we're seeing it really pick up now um, with appointments. Our wait time is around four weeks. So we're kind of looking at December now for appointments getting booked in. Um, oh, I should also mention, <laughs> we have a drop-in, so a walk-in, should I say, Again, announcements today, I'm not sure what, how that's going to impact, but for now, 11 until 2 every day, so seven days a week, um, people can just come to the centre, which is on Blanche Street, and um, refer themselves in to us. And we are open 10 till 10, Monday to Friday, 10 till 11, uh, 11 till 10, Saturday, Sunday, um, to take telephone referrals and also booked appointments. So we you know we're a seven-day service and we're, we... 
are hoping to help as many people as we can. <laughs> well, I, I had an handful of questions for you there, and then you've just fired them all at ah. my <laughs> That's absolutely Done fine. It. Uh, Nailed it. <laughs> what about the intense, uh, the intense, sorry, sorry, intense therapy then? Um, yeah, so we'll do sessions based around, we're, it's very person-centered, so um, we'll have essentially five appointments with somebody. So the first appointment we call a welcome appointment, and that's when we'll discuss you know, what's going on with that person, what sort of thing are they looking for support with, and um, then we'll decide on what interventions will be most suitable for them. So we do sessions on like anxiety, depression, low mood, paranoia, suicidal thoughts, um, substance misuse. Um, so loads of different types of mental health issues people might have um, and just work with them on sort of challenging those thoughts and behaviours and feelings and how they can best help themselves when they get in that um, thought spiral. <laughs> so, yeah, it's um, it's kind of like cognitive behavioural techniques, a lot of it. Um, you know, it is about the person doing the work for themselves. As a few people have mentioned today, you know, you kind of, you got to do it for yourselves. We're not here to fix anybody. We, we're here to kind of help them fix themselves. Um, so that's that's the crux of what we're trying to achieve um, and I think obviously mental health is has been quite impacted over the last seven eight months um, anybody who had existing mental health issues is finding it harder um, and then obviously there was like getting back into the real world again which brought a whole other range of issues up for people and then now probably going back into lockdown so you know we're all on a bit of a roller coaster at the minute and it's <laughs> it is causing all sorts of uh, um upheaval for everybody along with you know potential financial challenges um bereavement that's that's obviously affecting people as well um concerns for their own health um you know for people who are sort of vulnerable and shielding and stuff like that so you know there's loads of subjects and, and um sessions that we do with people and and they'll be tailored to what that person is struggling with so an anxiety session would not it'd never be the same for an individual because it's sort of tailored to what they need and what they're struggling with in particular can i just come in as well so um thanks for yeah. that emma and i'm glad that you, you come on to let people know that obviously the service that, that you offer so what I would um, advise people is that obviously with the, the current situation in this pandemic, and I've not actually seen what's going on, but I believe that we're potentially going back into another another yeah, lockdown. So I think, I'd, what, I I, what I would <laughs> say to people is to to get hold of either myself, Emma, or or Elizabeth, um, mm -hmm. if you need that sort of service, because I know that obviously yourself, um, Elizabeth, you're working with young people. Um, obviously, Emmy, yourself, you're going to you tail around mental health and, and a wide range of issue, issues. But ourself mm -hmm. as well is that we started working with, with people with mental health. We do um, work with Mind. So we have some structured sessions around mm -hmm. uh, mental health and supporting people in that way. So I'd advise people to get um, involved with all different services because, like I said, it's not about the service, it's about the people. And if we yeah. can all work together in, in benefiting people doing that, then we're achieving something, aren't we? So, um, like I said, if you don't know how to get hold of Emma, like I said, anybody can contact me or Elizabeth, um, contact me and I'll get sign post you to Elizabeth or um, Emma, and that's the Richmond Fellowship, and we are with you, formerly known as Young Gun Action. <laughs> Yeah, so you could look for us on Facebook as well. We've got a Facebook page, The Haven, um, Preston. And also, I should have mentioned that we're going to be looking at um, group sessions as well, which we used to do a lot of in-person group sessions. That all got um, <laughs> phoned, um, obviously, due to COVID. But we're looking at now bringing them back and doing them online, at least for the interim, because I think there was a feeling that, oh, well, we'll get back. And then it, it just got more, you know, it went on longer and longer. Uh, so... Um, looking at delivering them online and we're looking at the moment um, for sessions around um, employment skills, digital skills, uh, mindfulness and meditation and also um, creative writing as well as a, as a strategy for supporting your mental health. So those are the ones that we're looking at at the moment. So if you want more um, information about those and updates on those, um, follow the Facebook page because we'll, we'll be posting on there when, we're, when we've got them scheduled in. Absolutely brilliant. Can Absolutely. I just ask you a question, Emma? So we've got somebody 
on the chat, um, Lee, that's that's struggling. Um, mm -hmm. I, I know that you're not a crisis service, but what would you would you advise to Lee if um because he's he's obviously reaching out. Yeah, our advice would be to contact the start team. Um, so they're at West Strand. Um, I don't have the number to hand, and <laughs> um, or because they are a, a triage service, so they they will triage into the appropriate service. But if they're really really in crisis, it is one one one. Well, okay, okay. Well, I'm yeah. right in thinking. I'm right in thinking. Though that the start team uh, won't work with anybody that's drinking or taking drugs at the time. At the time of speaking to them. Mm. So, so we're going to refer somebody onto the start or to yourselves. Uh, and I mean, is it? I mean, let me just put it out there. So I know through experience that people that are already drinking, so it's hard to land any kind of information with them. You know, again, yeah. as well. So I know that the start team will back off on that situation. Mm -hmm. Hope for the people. So that's like we're coming to dual diagnosis, then, don't we? We're coming yeah. to a dual situation. And, you know, and I think, you know, there's a fine balance going on there. It's dealing with one without dealing with the other and then saying, well, look, you've got to deal with that before we can deal with this. And how, how hard do you find this? Yeah, and it is really hard. And, and to be honest, like I said, I'm really new to this and it's not even my background either. So this is a whole new, whole new career. Um, <laughs> but um, what we find is obviously there, there seems to be a bit of a gap for that crisis point. And it's a really difficult one because obviously we're not we're not crisis and we're not twenty four seven either. Um, we do have mental health practitioners that work in our building, um, so they only are here during our drop in hours, but they can assess as well. So if anybody was in a kind of acute crisis, they could probably assess them, but only during the drop in hours, which is obviously difficult because people don't plan these crises. <laughs> um, so what I'm from my experience, and like I say, it's limited at the minute, is there's a bit of a, um, a hole really for that crisis. And that's part of what we're here to do is alleviate some of the stress from A&E and GPs for people who are in crisis, or well, trying to stop them from getting to that crisis in the first place. But if they've already reached that point, like some of the, you know, we might refer to Minds Matters for counselling, but they won't take people who are actively suicidal either, as far as I'm aware. So um, we wouldn't, we would work with people who are using, but not under the influence at that time that we're working with them. So, we, you know, we're, we're again, not about abstinence. We're not a substance misuse place anyway, but we do sessions on that and we talk to them about, you know, coping strategies and techniques um, around that subject but it's not our specialism we don't have specialism really um, but we would ask that people wouldn't be under the influence when they come and see us or when we speak to them on the phone absolutely i just thought i'd clarify that um <laughs> emily would you like to come in and uh, see if we've got any questions any shout outs there isn't uh, i've put the haven preston facebook page on and elizabeth i've put the um the website for We Are With You and the number for the Preston office. Um, no, just Lee, Lee, Lee's struggling, you know, and Lee's reaching out. So hopefully they might be able to clarify some of what uh, Glenn's just asked and what Scott's just asked. Um, but no, thank you, Emma. That was really interesting. Um, but I've put the Facebook page on the comments. Um, oh, thank you. People. Yeah, thank you. Emma, I would like to thank you very much from the bottom of my heart as to jumping in at the last moment and giving your expertise, albeit you've not been in the job long, but it sounds no. like you have a lot of expertise anyway. Um, <laughs> but thank you for your patience as well today. I hope you've enjoyed this platform. I hope you've got a little Absolutely, bit of... yeah. And I just want to say thank you to everyone else as well, because it's really, really good for me to um, hear what they all had to say and all the fantastic work they're doing. So like, thank, thanks to everyone else for everything they shared. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Emma. Thank you very much. So, Glenn, uh, Gomez, it's Halloween. Uh, are you going trick-or-treating tonight, Bob? No, I've already got my mask on, me. I've already got my mask on. Um, but what I, what I am going to do is, obviously, I know that because of social guidelines, but I don't think people are allowed to trick-or-treat, are they? So, um, so what we're going to do instead is that we're going to do our prize giveaway. Um, where somebody can win a £20 voucher. So, um, 
Yeah, I just want to thank um, everyone that's been on tonight. Obviously, Emily, yourself, um, been great as usual. Um, very informative in the community, bringing the community into it. Um, Elizabeth, um, because there's a lot of young people out there that are struggling and they don't know how to access a service. So I think that it's great that you can come on and promote what you do, because I know so, um, from working with you guys, with Claire and Lisa and, and all them, the, the amazing the work, work that they do do. So I'd tell everybody to get involved. And also, Emma, I know that you were having technical difficulties um, at the beginning, but we got you here, didn't we? So, and Tom, Tom. Yeah! You're an absolute diamond. Um, you're an absolute joy to work with. You, you offer support to everybody. And I think that you're really, it's courageous what you've done. And I want to set my hat off to you, mate. I really do. So keep doing what you're doing, Paul, all right? Yeah, I'm loving it. I'm loving my life. You know, whatever comes into my life is going to be a bonus. Good stuff, lad. Good stuff. So, hold on a bit. Whoa, whoa, hold on a bit. You forgot someone. Oh, sorry, Scott. Scott, you get enough. You get enough. No way. Have I just felt the love coming through the screen then? No way. You know what? I love you as well, Glenn. You just carry on with your competition, pal. It's more important. Let's have it. You didn't give me a chance. You get enough affirmation off me. Um, You get it all every day, every day. So... Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm in love with yourself as well, Glenn. Don't worry about that. No problem. <coughs> so yeah. um, I'll just let people know. So this is for people that have liked and shared it, all from last week's um, Life Love Lounge, which, um, am I right in saying it was Pete, Pete and Emma that did it last week? Um, so whoever likes and shared it, then I put their names into a name generator, which you'll see in a minute. Um, I'm not a game show host, um, so just bear with me. What? But, well, yeah. Yeah, so <laughs> um, you've you've the train of thoughts gone now anyway. But yeah, so if you like and share for up until next Saturday, you'll enter next week's um, prize giveaway, which is will be on next week. So here it goes, guys. Go on, Carol. Vorderman, no. Funny, aren't you? <laughs> I try. I try my utmost. I didn't come into recovery to be boring. Trust me. Can everyone see that? Yeah. Certainly can, my friend. Can we have a drum roll then? Oh, is it, if, that's, if that's all you're going to give me, then don't, don't bother. <laughs> Max D, a £20 voucher will be on its way to you, but firstly, you need to. Um, when I message you on Facebook, I'm not a cold caller and I'm not um, a blagger. I am actually trying to contact you to try and so I can send you um, an e-gift card. So and not um, either. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, yeah, so that's that's that done. So I'm actually glad it's it. moved on a couple of names. There. My sister's name popped up as well. I don't like. No, please, no. It's going to look <laughs> fake. <laughs> Well, funny enough, our, our managing director won it last week, so we had to spin it again. So, brilliant, brilliant. Right, guys, uh, what can I say? You know, perfect timing, perfect platform, absolutely brilliant to see us all as well. Do you know what I mean? I, I mean, I, I absolutely love the kind of compassion and love and the experience and everything else that we're showing each other on these kind of platforms. You know, thank you to Peter and Emma as well. You know that created these platforms for all to sit here today. You know and give a little of themselves. You, you know, and I'm sure, regardless of the pandemic, regardless of what goes on, you, you know we've got brilliant characters like ourselves. You know, working with brilliant organisations as well. You know, and working with brilliant organisations to move forward. And as long as we've got each other in support and in love and everything else, I'd like to say a massive thank you to everyone joining us tonight and all the guys that have gone off as well. And uh, what more can I say? Happy Halloween. Share the love. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much, guys. And cheers for joining us. Thank Thanks. you. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye. <laughs> uh.